It's time for the Cooper Group's road trip, and it's an American revolution. Sea Weaver's lot is lined with brand new equinoxes. We pick out a silver one, and it's high ho silver away to Verona. Verona is the largest town in Oneida County, from Verona Beach to Fort Ricky to Turning Stone Casino. It is dissected by both the current Erie Canal and the old Erie Canal, which is now an historic park. Small communities grew up along its banks when canalers found general stores, hotels, and dry docks. Family farms, cheese factories, and glass factories accounted for much of the town's early economy. We stop into the well-stocked museum on Germany Road in Durhamville to meet the president of the Historical Society, Tom Beaver, and historian Dorothy Smilo. The first glass factory was in Durhamville, and then it was uh, bought by Samuel Fox, who came up from Sand Lake, New York, where he'd had a glass factory. And it employed a lot of people, and they were master craftsmen from Germany. Many of them were master glass blowers. And they manufactured uh, window glass in Durhamville. They paid the workers partially at least in shin plasters. And uh, then they went to the factory store and spent their shin plasters. So the, the Fox Company had the best of both worlds, I guess. Well, there were many small cheese factories in the area uh, and small farms. And the farmers would take their extra milk to the cheese factory and it would be, they would make the cheese, manufacture the cheese and then it would be sent by the canal or whatever uh, to cities and, and distributed in that way. There were two glass factories here in Verona and at the end of the day there'd be molten glass left over so that the craftsmen would take that and make what were called end of the day pieces. I'm holding one here for example, it is a, a, a chain uh, made from glass. The glass by the way is hollow. You would like to have been here to see how they did that. Here is a, a very artistic rose that was made at the end of the day and uh, this was a gorgeous cane. You can come here and see all of these. Uh, you may not be able to hold on to them as I am, but you'll be able to, to see them, and they are really something. Scattered around the town of Verona, there were some 21 one-room schoolhouses. There's a display of uh, a one-room schoolhouse here at the museum. It's loaded with all kinds of interesting things, including what caught my eye, this tin. It's called Anduseptic Dustless Crayon. But as a matter of fact, uh, crayons, I can't picture being dustless. Apparently, back then, crayon also meant uh, chalk. Many of the workers at the glass factories were master glass blowers from Germany, and they would be paid with regular money, but they'd also be paid with something called shin plasters. Tom and Dorothy were so happy with my performance here at the museum today that they paid me, and they paid me uh, $4 in shin plasters, so uh, I leave Verona richer than what I can. All the stars are falling from the sky. It's so nice, Molly, lying here by your side. One of Verona's famous sons was a farm boy, Russell Sage. He went off to work at 12, and then he uh, invested in the railroads. He saw the future of the railroads. The railroad goes right straight through here in Verona. And the interesting thing is, though, it was his wife who took the millions that he made and used that money to found a very famous college, which, of course, is Russell Sage. Freight train runs through this town at 5.30 Railroad bones, hobos, freeloaders, tattered and dirty Free life is all they will live again. In 1829, this part of the hamlet of Verona was known as Hans Village. 
And in that year, the oldest church in Verona was built. It's the First Presbyterian Church. It's still here, and you can come here to services on Sundays. In 2003, the church celebrated its bicentennial and also celebrated their newly completed fellowship hall, built on faith. Breaking bread is becoming a bit more expensive these days, which means the Fryhofer's Bakery outlet is busier than ever. For as long as I can remember, being that this is Mother's Day kind of brings it back, my mother would have my father come all the way out here. She couldn't drive and didn't drive, but he did. And so he'd drive all the way out here to Fryhofer's to buy bread and donuts and things of that nature because you could get them, well, pretty much half price. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, I do because I was told down at the Historical Society that these shin plasters were good any place. The they're, they're no good here? No. I, really? And I do have a dirty truck you can wash. Well, thank you. Tom told me that I could use these shin plasters any place in Verona. Well, so much for that. The Fryhofer's Bakery Outlet has been here for decades, but behind the building are two new businesses. Country at Heart had its grand opening last week and features primitives, candles, wooden signs, and more. It is closed on Tuesdays, but open every other day at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 11 a.m. Next door is Traditions Archery Pro Shop and Indoor Shooting Range. League competitions for adults are Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. and a youth league on Saturday at 10 a.m. The shooting range is open during store hours, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 to 5.